Sure, thank you. I'm Matt and I'm a botanist with the State of Hawaii Division of Forestry and Wildlife. So I'm here to talk a little bit about the Plant Extinction Prevention Program, just in general, and you'll hear a lot more details from the, from the staff in the next few weeks. Uh, Hawaii's Plant Extinction Prevention Program is a project of the University of Hawaii, and it's funded by private grants and with support from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. Uh, next slide. PEP is focused on single species conservation to prevent extinction. When new taxa are discovered, they are assessed and added to the target list. And changes in the number, of, in the number and arrangement of native taxa have cascading effects for our staff and we track it all carefully. PEP's field botanists are often the first to have questions about new species and we use these statistics to communicate the urgent need to prevent extinction. We know the 108 plants that are considered extinct so we can look for them. We can explain how over a third of Hawaii's native plants are on the country's endangered species list. And PEP has been successful in defining rare plants as PEP species with fewer than 50 individuals remaining in the wild. And today, over 100 PEP targets have fewer than 10 individual plants remaining in the wild. Every species counts and is counted. Next slide. There are numerous PEP targets on each island and a limited number of staff. This map shows the approximate number of PEP targets on each of the major islands in yellow, 88 for Kauai and 45 for Molokai, et cetera. And there are between two and three PEP staff on each island. So given the number of work hours in a year, as shown here in red, staff have on average just three to five days per year to spend on each PEP species. Next slide. So the reasons for the decline of native plants are numerous. Development has erased habitat in most lowland areas. And this shows where I'm from. I'm from the Valley of Kalawau on the island of Oahu and now reside in Manoa. Next slide. Introduced animals need to be physically excluded and invasive weeds need to be individually removed. And these are the activities that take up the day-to-day -day work for field botanists. Next slide. Rats are manually controlled and slugs need to be excluded or repeatedly culled in perpetuity. Next slide. Burned areas are rebuilt from the ground up and we must now serve the role of pollinators and for other mutualisms that are lost from some areas. Next slide. The urgent mission of PET is to fill seed banks and botanic gardens to ensure the species are secured before they go extinct in the wild. Since the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973, an average of one plant species has gone extinct in the wild every year in Hawaii. Since PEP started in 2003, the extinction rate increased by 10%. There's little time to ponder how species are related before they will be gone. So individual plants are carefully labeled and tracked over generations to allow for total flexibility in later grouping these plants as siblings, subpopulations, or as different species. Next slide. We heard a lot about this plant yesterday, Cyania superba. And in 1997, I started to work with the last few plants in the Waianae Mountains with the Army's Natural Resource Program. There were six of them alive at the time, and we were on an urgent mission to prevent its extinction. We wrapped the last plants in rat traps and hung nets to catch every fruit, but we also took samples to Dr. Morden, as he talked about yesterday, looking for every way to just get more plants to work with. 
maybe some of the plants alive in the nurseries or in a private collection on Kauai held unique alleles that would help save the species. Next slide. And the results of genetic research have had important consequences for many rare plants over the years. Rare plants and the places they grow have been protected because the results of genetic studies show them to be species that required that protection. Next slide. For Cyania superba and for many other species since, we pestered Dr. Morden to interpret the data and pushed him to return any useful information about how the remaining diversity could be leveraged to save the species. You can see notes here, handwritten from Kapua Cabello, mapping where the samples came from and trying to make the most of the little diversity left in the three wild plants we ended up getting seeds from. Next slide. But over the years, the list of studies to aid its recovery has grown. The careful work to identify unique founders guided how we first balanced them at planting sites and represented them in ex situ collections. But the new plants we grew were also eaten by rats and died too young without reproducing. So the studies continue today. And now we struggle with how to assist its migration to more favorable sites while knowing we at least started with all we could. Next slide. I like this quote from Elizabeth Farnsworth saying, basic and applied research in conservation biology can make a difference for rare species by translating often complex and seemingly arcane findings into clear information, recommendation, and rules of thumb for practical action that managers can apply toward protecting and restoring rare species and habitats. Scientists can ask themselves how they can couch their research in a way that will answer interesting questions and meaningfully inform the choices a manager will make. Next slide. I personally can barely keep up with the biology and science to ask good questions about plants. And I'm still stuck on this first one every day. What is this plant? But as the urgency to pre prevent extinction grows, we need to know more details. How many plants are here to protect and collect from? And the more plants in places we see, we ask, should we count this as a different population, subspecies, or species? And as restoration is now more and more possible, we ask, will mixing these founders result in a better population? Next slide. I can see how project planning is really important in fostering good relationships between species managers and researchers. Going over these logistics allows managers and researchers to refine the questions, more clearly see the limitations, and aim for results with actionable conclusions. Next slide. Talking about how the results will be interpreted and shared will also bring the team together and focus on how to save the plants. The management implications of the results should be discussed in advance to make sure they are feasible. Next slide. And collectively, this will help us to be more specific about what research is needed to give us more tools. There are some good examples of how research needs for birds have been prioritized and documented. And perhaps this is our opportunity to prioritize the work we need done with these plants to prevent their extinction. Next slide. Most rare species in Hawaii are not reproducing quickly enough to replace themselves, but extinction can be prevented with teamwork, and that's the mission of PEP. And this next last slide has the address, the PEP website, and my contact information. Thanks for your time. I'm thrilled to be a part of this and looking forward to the next set of workshops. Thank you.